eighth of what? Oh, now you're getting into what we talked about this morning. Well, you see, I was a segue. Yes. So tell us about that, Rocco. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start out and I'll let Chris fill in some of the blanks. Yes. But uh, essentially, there's a couple things we'd love to kind of talk about. Number one is how we talk about dosing. Mm-hmm. So you're not talking about how many grams of dried mushroom you ate because we've already done some testing and we know that there's quite a bit of variability in potency some from 0.1 percent to plus three percent so that could make a difference of four to five x in terms of dosing if you think you're taking this much and you had a really potent strain you could be taking four to five times that much which obviously is a problem if you're trying to have an anticipated experience and it goes four to five times beyond that Back here, Mita Unshackled at the Emerald Conference in San Diego, California. It's 2024, and I'm here with my friend Rocco. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, you, Dimitri? You brought your bag. I did. I so this is Rocco's little video mushroom bag. It's right straight from San Jose del Pacifico. How are you enjoying the conference so far? It's been great. First day, and... Uh... There's some really good conversations here. That's what I like. People, it's just like there's a good number of people, and you have really long, good conversations with them, Absolutely. which is a lot different than like some of the bigger conferences. And I love MG BizCon, but you know, everybody's like, and something they don't want to miss anything. So you get like three seconds, 30 seconds, where's the next party? You don't have yeah. really long conversations, but here it's like a curated crowd, you know, really intelligent individuals. So, you know, you have some good conversations. So, some very that. intelligent people. Uh, and you brought your friend here with you. Yes, Chris. Do, do you want to introduce him? or? Yes, uh, well, or Chris, I'll let him. Chris uh, want to introduce himself? This Chris. is Chris Pauly yeah. from Colorado. Yes, yeah, so I'm Chris Pauly. I'm a co-founder of Tryptomics, and we've been doing mushroom and psychedelic research and all kinds of natural product research, doing chemical testing and genetic testing as well. Trip, What? Tryptomics. So like tryptomics. We, I do genomics and transcriptomics. Um, so it's like the study of, uh, basically T R Y, tryptomics. And what is the legal status in Colorado? You guys have uh, therapeutic centers are legalized, but you can't buy and sell CPG products. What's the exact status of of uh, psilocybin in Colorado? Yeah, so we passed a statewide decriminalization. Um, of all natural medicines, so that includes cactus, uh, DMT bark, um, mushrooms, and basically you're allowed to possess them, eat them, um, gift them, gift, um, and research them. And so that's kind of how we can operate in that space uh, by being able to play under the decriminalization rules while they're still rolling out the regulations for the therapy centers and that whole industry that will form. So all these CPG packaged mushroom things that I'm getting out of Colorado are all technically kind of illegal. I don't care. I'm just asking. Who's <laughs> asking? <laughs> I don't know. I don't you. know. You guys aren't doing. You guys aren't doing it, but you hear people are doing it. Well, but it, it we're is what it is. Them. What? I mean, it, they're, you're right. They're available, yeah. readily available. Yeah, I'm just asking what yeah. the, I'm trying to, it's unshackled. We try to disclose what's really happening in the world, you know? I mean, so, so CBGs are illegal, technically. I, th- I think a lot of but you can gift them, con- though. You can gift them, you mm-hmm. can possess them. Um, so there's kind of that early days of cannabis feel to it. Right. Um, I'm moving but to also, a lot of times, you know, cops aren't notorious for pulling you over and finding mushrooms on you and busting you for being a bad guy. Like, yeah. You don't really get that connotation with them. So I think a lot of it boils down to the enforcement of it. And it's just not something police really want to enforce. It's it's not causing harm to anybody. So what are they going to they, they would be creating the harm that's being caused there. Yeah, of course. So, so in, in the gifting thing, are people like. Like uh, gifting T-shirts and throwing in some <laughs> selling T-shirts and throwing in a gift. That is, is that happening? 
That is one way. There is a. You're not doing it. You're just telling no. me what other people are doing. Yes. No. I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> yeah, just, There's all kinds of crazy like, ways gonna, that they're. I'm being not going to tell on my friends. This is, uh, he's having say, flashbacks. There is. <laughs> tell a, us what's happening, Rocco. Come on. Come on. No. Go ahead. Sorry. There is the idea of selling, uh, like consulting, so you can trip sit for somebody and charge for that. Uh, and give them mushrooms. Consulting. Uh, basically, you, yes. I teach you how to Guide. use mushrooms. Let me explain your dosing of it. Let me give you information on how to right. handle it, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, things like that. And it's like, well, you can pay me for that service, and then I can gift you mushrooms. Um, that's a great idea. So there's that kind of caveat <laughs> that's like it's I a, love it. I didn't know that business model. You see, now a it's, it's not a business model. Now I have something. <laughs> it's not a business. No, but it's, it's your consulting business. business. It's and you're gifting. It's a spiritual business. Okay. Well, I mean, but it's still a business. I mean, even the Catholic Church is in the business of true. You know, I mean, they're big landlord Indeed. people. Let's be honest here. Okay. <laughs> so, what other models are out there? I love this uh, consulting. Con well, let me just add one thing for yeah. clarification and accuracy. So, what we kind of glossed over a little bit is there's yeah. two parts. So, there's the decrim which is what we're talking about here. Right. You can grow, possess, and gift as much as you want, really, with no limits. And then there's a the regulated model, which is currently being real, rolled out, and it is not implemented yet. So, But the regulated model isn't going to have uh, production, manufacturing. It's and not a retail model. It's it not is, a retail model. It is a medical model. And you got to go in. There's all kinds of um, various uh, steps in the process where you got to have all these different sessions and you got to have licensed practitioners and all this stuff that basically creates a situation where you're paying a thousand to three thousand dollars for a session but for, are, are, but who's going to produce the products there will be licensed producers oh there will be yes but they will not be able to sell retail you cannot leave a facility with mushrooms you have to take them at the facility <clears throat> Okay. I, yeah. A hundred percent correct, right? That's as <laughs> far as mess, I know about right? it. And there's different time frames. Too. And they're still rolling a, it out. Take a micro dose. You only stay 30 minutes or an hour. Mm -hmm. You take an eighth dose. You're staying for sometimes six hours. And then it always raises the question of what if the person tries to leave? What are you going to do at this doctor's office to hold this person there? That right. You gave them mushrooms <laughs> and they got up and left. And so Eric's, Eric's, nobody holds Eric down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like tackle the guy or how are you going to handle that? Um, and how do you know the, the strength of the dosage, an eighth of what? Oh, now you're getting into what we talked about this morning. Oh, well, you see, I was a segue. Yes. So tell us about that, Rocco. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll start out and I'll let Chris fill in some of the blanks. Yes. But uh, essentially, there's a couple of things we'd love to kind of talk about. Number one is how we talk about dosing. Mm -hmm. So you're not talking about how many grams of dried mushroom you ate because we've already done some testing and we know that there's quite a bit of variability in potency some from 0.1 percent to plus three percent so that could make a difference of four to five x in terms of dosing if you think you're taking this much and you had a really potent strain you could be taking four to five times that much which obviously is a, a problem if you're trying to have an anticipated experience and it goes four to five times beyond that okay um, so what we would like to start the conversation towards is talking about the dosing in terms of milligrams of the active ingredient, which is psilocin. So we've kind of been talking about this terminology of psilocin equivalent. Psilocin equivalent. Yes, dosing. And that's measured in milligrams. Um, okay. And, and is that... With what we experienced in Oaxaca was probably somewhere around a 40 to 50 milligram psilocin. Who experienced? I don't know. I don't know. These people what, I heard about. They, 12 of them. Was that four, four, 40? That was about 40 to what? I'm guessing just from anecdotal experiences, uh, probably that was in the 40 to 50 milligram of yeah. psilocin equivalent. Interesting. Each. <laughs> well, the people that drank the full cup. Yeah. The, the, there were I four of us that only drank half a cup. I worry about those people. <laughs> are, they, are they still lost in the jungle somewhere? It's yeah, funny. Yeah. I was telling Chris about it. We were supposed to go mushroom foraging, and uh, every one of the 12 people forgot about that <laughs> until way after the, the experience was over. There's a substantial amount of distraction. 
There was. Yes. And, uh, and by the way, this is, I much respect for my Colorado journeymen who know how to handle their shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great respect. But tell me a little bit about uh, Triptomics. What do you guys do? Tell me about the company. How did it start? You know? Yeah, so basically we, uh, both my co-founder and myself, were in cannabis studying the chemistry and genetics of cannabis and realized how to partner those two to do metabolomics. So it's figuring out what metabolites do you produce and how do you produce them. Um, and so we've kind of partnered our skills to really go after all natural products instead of just really looking at, you know, just cannabis by itself and saying, OK, I can get to 33 cannabinoids we test for. Um, that something is great, but it's like, oh, why don't we do this in mushrooms? Why aren't we doing this in cacti? Why aren't we doing this in D our DMT extracts? Like we should have this in everything that uh, we use to understand, you know, what am I taking is you know, can I predict this experience? Can I customize the experience? If you ever have macro to micro, kind of know what I'm saying, where it's you get to that point of this is a little more than I was expecting that day. And so we provide testing services to the general public under that decrim rule. You can personal use test through us. So all your mushrooms that you submit to our lab are for personal use only. Um, and we're not licensed by the state of Colorado to do it, but we're allowed to operate under that decriminalization law right now. Right. And so we provide those services. We also do marker-assisted breeding uh, genetic markers that I've created um, that aim to kind of customize that uh, chemical profile. So if you want a higher norbeocysteine mushroom or a higher beocysteine mushroom, um, you can make that right now versus, you know, in cannabis when we only could measure THC, the only thing you could breed for is THC. Yeah, I'm just I'm just curious what kind of gifting he does, Eric. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but a a along those lines, I've always wondered this. You guys are experts. You know, um, even with cannabis, you don't know what it's going to do to a human. You know, it doesn't you can say 5%, 10%, 20%, 30% THC or test, you know, explain what's in there a dozen different ways. But it's still going to impact every single person differently. You know, and same thing with mushrooms with psilocybin or with psilocin you know so Very good so so why so why bother you know i'm just kidding now I, I i already i can answer my own question i know why we should bother so you could at least give some sort of guidance but like even like when i do a shot of vodka if all three of us did a shot of vodka right now all three of us are going to have a different different reaction to that shot of vodka you know depending on a lot of factors you know, so it's it's just a fascinating dynamic that it's a real world problem, uh, a real world issue. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a problem, but it's a real world issue that needs to be addressed. Aren't aren't I mean how how do we get there? You know how do we how do we do that in 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 cannabis or especially psilocybin mushrooms? I'd you know, say this is kind of where we have made our vision at Triptomics is the idea of personalized natural medicine. That was another segue. That you're mm -hmm. able to go so into. I was tossing your softball there. <laughs> you're able to go into. He's going to hit it out of the park. I, I, well, I'm a little familiar with what you're up to. <laughs> I say, so we, we came up with this idea of personalized natural medicine. You get cancer, you get personalized chemotherapy. You have a depression, you can get personalized antidepressants based on your serotonin receptors and how you process these drugs. You can sequence somebody, figure out what enzymes they have, and then relate that to what their experience is. And so mm. then I can base it on maybe you have a broken liver enzyme that you take this drug and you can't break it down or you break it down really fast. And so you might not want to use that drug. And so that's getting into pharmacogenomics. So where you relate a drug to your genome and you understand that drug human interaction and why different humans have these different responses to drugs. Um, but I take it one step farther and even say it's really, I think, boils down to microbiomics. So right. the idea that you have more bacteria and fungi in your gut than you do in human cells. Um, when you take a mushroom that's known to produce a lot of antibiotics and other kinds of compounds that can fight these things, potentially would that potentially be the reason why it's six months after you did a psilocybin dose, you still have antidepressant effects. We know our, our gut brain interaction is so influential in our life. Uh, why wouldn't we think these mushrooms are changing our gut health? That's why we fast before we... It's all part of it, I think, and it's it's something that there's five or four hundred and some bioactive compounds in mushrooms that we've identified. Yeah, um, and that is just, I think, scratching the surface. We should test that after Ramadan, like after like the forty days, you know, mm. nothing in our systems. 
or do they, they don't totally fast for 40 days something like that. i'd but, say if you ever ate mushrooms on an empty stomach they're they're a different experience for yeah. sure that's interesting it does make a difference yeah i mean like and again it, it's, it's not a problem it's not an issue it's an opportunity it's all the above but you know the the what you eat and packs your trip you know that's a huge factor you know though that's like you could probably do a whole cookbook on that couldn't you like like you know, grapefruit juice is going to do this and you could spend like a whole year studying like all these different ketchup mustard mcdonald's whatever you're saying <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just thinking about it's business ideas. It's something we do, though. You think about it, you know, drinking orange juice after you eat mushrooms, make them kick in quicker. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been yes. just, you know, anecdotal forever. And then the idea of mixing it with dark chocolate, then it has MAOIs in the dark chocolate. So yes. And flavonoids in the dark chocolate that have a bioactive that, effect. Okay. That, that uh, explains why he had that chocolate and the orange juice. He's keeping it all himself last <laughs> time I saw him. That makes a lot of sense now. And well, the dark chocolate will have the uh, heavy metals with it. <laughs> Apparently. Infused. <laughs> well, that's cool. But Ro Rocco, tell us more about what you're up to in, in your standardization. Stuff. Well, uh, great question. We've been uh, doing some work with Chris and several other lab partners to do some of this research. Are you doing work? Wait, it is work. <laughs> it is work. Um, kidding. It's so not we, work when you love what you do. You're you're correct. Yes, that's and, right. and there's gifts involved. There is, there is <laughs> and there's always gifts involved. Um, so. What we are doing is collaborating as a group of laboratories. And if you think about that for a second, that is not something you hear about very often, if ever. And yeah. um, we got six very quality labs to participate in some testing across uh, 12 strains of mushrooms. And we did like a round robin, and, um, collaborated and basically validated some of our results through some discussion. We had a couple of different uh, rounds of discussion and then... Um, we recently published a paper with those results about the the different uh, test results. And what we saw was some of what we've been talking about, the tremendous variability in potency, as well as uh, the contents of some of the minor um, compounds, the uh, alkaloids. Am I saying that right? Alkaloids. And, oh, so in, I'm uh, pulling something out here. Keep going. Yeah. And so um, we've uh, been doing that. We've also been doing a shelf stability test. Uh, study. So what we did is produced a, basically a two-year supply of uh, half gram mushroom capsules, which represents what is happening out there in the world. A lot of people are capsulating dried mushroom powder and throwing it in a medicine cabinet and, you know, taking them whatever. And so uh, what we're doing is studying how the um, uh, shelf stability holds up in terms of the potency. And um, we're early on, uh, two months into that study, but um, our lab partners have done some other similar studies. And what we've uh, learned is that if stored properly in a dark container, you know, no light, and um, properly dehydrated, less than 5%, generally uh, cracker dry, as we say, in terms of um, the, uh, the condition of it, we find that... Uh, doesn't really change too much. Uh, there is, if you're measuring psilocybin and psilocin, those are changing. But in terms of the total uh, psilocin, which is the final uh, psychoactive component, it, it basically remains pretty, pretty stable if stored properly. Wow, so mushrooms that have been sitting in your medicine cabinet for a year, if they were properly dried and stored, they're probably still pretty potent. Interesting. They always say that. Do you have more to add to that, Chris? The, I don't no, want to. I would agree with that. And I think there's one study out there that I have a problem with that basically did a shelf stability study on certain strains of mushrooms and found everything degrades like really quickly. Um, and really what I think that is, is just the lack of moisture content that they didn't get it dry enough. And when you leave them wet, it will degrade all of these compounds. I'm not an expert, but I do think they degrade because they say it's better to go to San Jose to the Pacifico in August, September, October, when the mushrooms are fresh rather than February, March, April, when there's not as many mushrooms, it's not no, as much weather to create mushrooms. That's so I'm, so they're using the, the mushrooms that they carry over from, uh, you know, that type of time of year, August, September, October, they store them and they sell them during the, spring months but people say that they're not as good 
Oh yeah. No, it's an, and I think so. it's something that fresh mushrooms and dried yes. mushrooms are always a huge difference in my yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, this I'm pretty like, sure the ones we that was during the had were fresh. Yeah, that yeah, was, was very August. fresh. Yeah. That was during the monsoon season. Mm-hmm. You know, when the people say they that they go. These are like anecdotal sto- stories that scientists like yourselves or subject matter experts like yourselves need <laughs> yeah. to validate. I'd say so. We actually got a chance to go to Oaxaca with a nonprofit I work with, the Entheome Foundation. Right. Um, and their goal is to sequence entheogen genomes um, and kind of do this all over the world and set up basically research stations that mm-hmm. local mycologists and local scientists can take over and continue this work. Um, and so we got to go down to San Jose del Pacifico and set one up um, down there, I think, two years ago now or three years ago. Did we see um, him? No, we did not. Where? This was uh, basically we did it at a hotel. Um, yeah. Like a retreat we were center. in a trap house, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> Whatever you're doing was way too technical for what we were up to. Well, it was something we were able to show up with all this science equipment in yeah, the there was, cloud rainforest. There was no science equipment in our trap house. And so we got to uh, basically sequence some of the mushrooms, go yes. foraging. We found, I think, seven or ten different species of like cyanescence, uh, Mexicana, Zapatocorum. All of these are different species of psilocybe mushrooms. Um, oh, so, and so the ones we named Rocco's finest already have a name. <laughs> oh yeah, and they probably have a unique genetic sequence that differentiates yeah, see, them from all the mushrooms you can get around America. Right we now. weren't discovering a new world. No. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. But what else? No. This is great. So where where in San Jose Pacifico is this? Uh, I'm trying to think. It was basically like you drive through the town and just keep going up the mountain, um, and then. Yeah, just continue back there. It was a little dirt road. I'm trying to think of the name of the hotel that we stayed at. It was an eco hotel. Yeah. Just beautiful place. They had a Tez Macal there, which uh, the day we did kind of our ceremony down there, um, we did Tez Macal that morning. And so it was kind of the whole you thing. You did it before. Uh-huh. And the whole thing was uh, basically we were eating a vegan diet down there. They didn't serve any meat at this property. Right. So you were eating these like bread crackers things and then salads every day. And I was just like, you felt like so clean. And I think the Tesma Kale yes. before like even clenched your body even more with this idea of like, oh yeah, like I just sweated out all of this out of my body. Like this was, yeah. Some I think of the, before, before and after my work. That might be the way. You might be. <laughs> is if, anybody, you can, if you is, can do two is, in a day. Is anybody mixing hot yoga with mushrooms in Colorado? I would have to guess somebody is. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's another gift. It will happen there first if it hasn't already. You buy the hot yoga and your gifted mushrooms. I'm just saying that would be pretty. Like yeah. if you if you were doing hot yoga, and you did uh, maybe twenty to twenty five milligrams of psilocin. He's got it. I got, got it. it. Very good. When you enter the hot yoga studio. Then you did your stretching, and 30 minutes in, it would start to kick in. And then the last 35 minutes would be like, really? If you really. did 25 milligrams of psilocin, it would be a lot more than the, the last 35 minutes. We yeah, like it's six hours. It's, it's going to be <laughs> the next five hours. Okay. Well, so <laughs> after so, you're stretched out. Such so a longer yoga session than usual. <laughs> but we hot like long, business ideas. Hot long yoga. You know, because ultimately people need to make a living. So we're try- always trying to help people come up with business ideas. Whether it's in psilocybin or in cannabis, that's what we we give them freely. So here's an idea: this might work. Nice. You know? Yeah, I think a lot of people go for the spore idea too. Like the spores are legal to sell, and so if you're growing these mushrooms, you can just take the spore print of them. Mm-hmm. And if you're good at that, people will buy that from you, pay a good amount of money for it for your time, um, and that's a legal business. Like that's something you can legitimately do, and there's no issue with it. That are making grow bags, making the kits. You know, yeah. Sell the shovels to the gold shovels miners. And picks. Yeah. yeah. I have a friend who, we have a mutual friend who has a whole room full of picks and shovels growing mushrooms. <laughs> it is what it is. No, but it's great to get to know you. We look forward to catching up with you in other countries or in other conferences. You know, if you're hanging out with Rocco, you're clearly on the path of doing the right thing for the psilocybin industry and movement community, you know, et cetera. I'm, I, I've become like a total free market guy. So we, all this stuff is kind of hard for me to say. I'm not. FYI, he's been at it longer than I have. So yeah, I'm respect not, goes to him. Yeah, well, that's good. 
Um, but yeah, to catch up with us anytime on Meet Unshackled. We'll probably see you at the next Emerald Conference next year. I'm going to see you around. And uh, and uh, I'm, I'm seriously thinking that I should run an initiative in Arizona for psilocybin. You should. You know, I'll help you. To allow people to microdose and to create like a supply chain for microdosing production distribution retail of microdosing in, in arizona why not you know yeah. it's just like i mean i think it's something that we're gonna see a lot of new models roll out too like one of our um people that legalized denver mushrooms as now doing like a gifting portal he calls it where you can show up and just receive mushrooms and gift mushrooms to each other no money exchanged but like he's selling this thing out every month and a bunch of people are giving out really like fine products of mushrooms that like, you know, here's my box chocolate bar with the test result. You can try this one, like, and it's all free. And it's like this they're so cheap to grow, they're so easy to grow. There's something that, you know, when you charge a absorbent amount for these things, it just feels wrong. I don't know how to say it any other way, but this is a something I think you do because you love it. It's something you do because you respect it. Um, and you know, I think the money will come in many ways. I don't think it's something you have to try and monetize mushrooms so much that we, you know, overdo it like we did with tobacco or anything that we've kind of taken our natural product and commercialized everything we could off of it. I hear what you're saying. I'm just, this is what we do on Meet Unshackled. We just try to help people navigate the B2B aspect of the different, of cannabis really. But we're, as seems to be, the, there's a natural correlation with natural plant-based medicine. We're diving deeper into psilocybin and psilocin. psilocin. Yeah, that, that's one of the things. We kind of glossed over it, but I will say that I am excited that Colorado did, uh, allowing for the opportunity of, um, you know, the, under the degree decrim part of the regulation that folks growing under their beds can get their product tested. Not every state. I don't think uh, Oregon allows that. That's excellent. Yep. Well, these two guys know more about this subject matter than anyone that I know. So if you're out there and you want to learn more, you should reach out to both of them. How do people find you guys? Yeah, so my website's triptomics.com. Um, we're on Instagram. We uh, always respond to questions on our website. That's where you can learn all about the testing panels we have for all the different natural products. Um, we also sell at-home test kits on there. Um, so, yeah, definitely reach out. I always love to help people figure out what they can test for and how to do that most effectively. And we should say that's spelled T-R-Y-P-T-O-M-I-C-S. Are you on Instagram, too? Mm-hmm. Yep. We've uh, been doing Instagram for a while. That's the main one I'd say we use the most That like you know to put out some of our research, things yes. that are happening in the lab. Um, yeah, that, that's been the easiest way to get in touch with us. And I'm at psychedelicstandards.org, and email is rocco at psorg.org. And I think we're definitely going to include both of them, Eric, on our Meet a Secret Santa. You know what I'm saying? Don't know nothing about they'll, they'll, that. They'll be gifting, you know. Oh, that Secret Santa. <laughs> secret Santa, you know. <laughs> Who's your Secret Santa? Well, clearly it's Rocco. <laughs> All right, this Thanks, has been Dimitri. another episode of Meet Unshackled. We'll be back in Emerald with more individuals. See you next time. <laughs>